Hello everyone, welcome to the webinar, Control a World of Computers from your Linux PC. I'd like to turn this presentation over to Andy Oram, Senior Editor with O'Reilly Media. Hello Andy. Thanks Catherine. Catherine didn't introduce herself, she's a staunch publicist at O'Reilly. Welcome to O'Reilly's second author webinar. I'm going to introduce Carla Schroeder. Linus Torvalds often declares that his goal is world domination. Most of the participants on the seminar can't hope to reach that height, but you can all dominate a few chosen desktop systems around the world. This fact is one of Linux's selling points and is provided by several remote desktop and administration programs. Programs such as VNC and R Desktop run on a variety of operating systems, so you can help a client on a Windows, Macintosh, or a Linux system while sitting at your Linux system on another continent. You can control two computers from a single keyboard and monitor, share a single desktop with a classroom, and wander freely with your wireless laptop while connected to your main workstation. System and Network Administrator Carla Schroeder has been advising Linux users through articles, consultations, and books for over 10 years. Her two O'Reilly books are the popular Linux Cookbook and Linux Networking Cookbook. Her columns also appear often on our onlamp.com site. Carla can speak about almost anything Linux or sysadmin related, but today she's going to tell us how to use some remote desktop programs to do customer support and other tasks. Carla will take about 20 minutes for her demonstration. You may type in questions at any time. When the demonstration is over, Carla will choose questions and answer as many as we have time for. There are 250 people signed up for this conference, so please be understanding if we couldn't get to your question. All right, are you seeing my screen now? You should have a picture of my most wonderful computer room where I spend my days. I'd just like to point out a few key features. There is an actual window to let in daylight. I know that real geeks don't have windows, but, you know, I like having a window. Over here next to the laptop is the computer cat. you got to have a cat. It's very necessary to have hair getting into everything and have her walking on keyboards. So this is a picture, uh, not real time. Yeah. Right. And actually, um, you know, this is, this is my, my test lab, my main workstation. I mean, this is where I do my work. It's a really nice situation. I love being able to work at home. Today, this demonstration, you're, going, you're only going to see it on my main work screen, but it's going to have three computers. I have a Linux computer in the middle, a Linux computer on the left, and Windows XP on the right. Remote administration is one of the things that Linux does really well. Now, I work in SSH a lot. I'm sure you're all familiar with OpenSSH. That's pretty much a standard system administration tool. There's a, it's the fastest because, <clears throat> of course, the text interface is always the quickest. Okay, I'm going to bring up my little cheat sheet here. Now, I suppose most of you must know this incantation, SSH-Y. That lets you run graphical Linux programs over your SSH session. So you can do both text and SSH. Okay, I am now logged into my left-hand computer, and I can run everything here from the command line just as if I were sitting at it. Well, maybe you don't want to just do everything from the command line. So, you can run any application that is installed on your remote computer. Let's say I want to edit this text file right here, and I don't want to use Nano or Vim. I want to use Kate. Okay, I won't use Kate. I'll use Kwrite, since Kate apparently is not on that computer. And there we go. So here I have a nice, friendly graphical interface. It's pretty fast. It's almost as fast as sitting right at that computer. I use this a lot. I have, uh, of course, my laptops are both wireless, so I can just wander around the house and work wherever I feel like working. I don't have to stay trapped in this little room all day, even though it is a very pleasant room. Now, maybe I even want to bring up a file manager. As you can 
can see, I like KDE. I like it a lot. <laughs> Come on. I'll make it type for me. And we will just open. Come on. The file management profile. Okay, and there's everything. And I can just go to town here again, just like I was sitting at that computer. This is one of my favorite ways to work. I think a lot of people, when they think of remote graphical administration, they want to see their whole desktop. And you can do that. It's slower. It's more resource intensive. This is just a little faster and more efficient. Um, oh, and SSH safety basics. You know, of course, that you never ever want to enable root logins except under exceptional circumstances. So here I am, Carla at Ripley. If I need it to be the root user, then I'll just do it from here. That's just a nice little safety measure because there are a lot of brute force SSH attacks all over the place. And even on your own network, now if you have your own little network at home, it's probably not such a big deal. But in businesses, inside jobs are still the biggest source of problems. It's not the outside hackers trying to get in. All right, and that's enough of that. Now, SSHFS, SSH file system, this is a really neat way to do, to, um, do remote editing on your documents. I already have it set up. What you would do is first create a local mount point and then run a command like this. My local mount point is the temp folder. So I am going to mount my uh, home directory that is on, that is on Ripley in the temp folder. So you can just use your same old SSH password. And there's all my files, again, just as if I were sitting at Ripley instead of at Xena. And now, if I want to use my file manager, Conqueror, then I just use the local one. And this is pretty fast, too. And this is a great way, if you have a lot of documents to edit, then there they are right there. You know, ordinarily with SSH, if you're just using command line and a non-graphical interface, you're just working on one file at a time. If you have a lot of files to work on, this is faster and more efficient. And it's just like working on your local system. There, there aren't any weird little glitches like you get sometimes, say, with Samba. Um, the GIMP, the graphics editing program, that's one example of an application that has a little bit of problem editing files from a Samba share. You have to copy them to a local directory. It's not able to edit a file directly in a share, while other applications can. So let's just say goodbye to this. And when you're finished, you run this command, F user mount, to unmount your local mount point. And as you can see, all gone. Slick and quick. Now, a big problem for a lot of Linux and Unix administrators, they still have to write herd on Windows computers. And Windows, it's a little more difficult to do remote administration. It has some funky tools. And it actually has some good ones, too. Um, for the good ones, the sticking point is usually the cost. You're, you're paying for all these access licenses. So in the open source world, we have our desktop, the remote desktop program. Now, this doesn't work on all Windows, uh, on all versions of Windows. <coughs> Excuse me. It's a client for Windows terminal services. So you can use it with Windows XP Pro, any Windows Server, Vista Business Edition, Ultimate, or Enterprise, um, Windows NT Server as well. It doesn't work on Windows 98 or ME, and I don't think you'd really want those in a business environment anyway. So the first thing you need to do is go into your um, appropriate configuration box in Windows and set it up to allow these uh, remote desktop connections. And then it's just this simple.